last night, uh, on the one hand, on the superficial level, a very heartwarming story. So the deal was that uh, the Miami Heat and Eddie House was there, played the Boston Celtics last night, and a young man, I don't know how old he was, Rob G, do you know? He, he was maybe 12, 11 years old, something like that. But he it's flew live and in. die sports, you know that. Right. He flew in to with his mom his family. Uh, all the way from Argentina, his family, to see Jimmy Butler. That was, I guess that's his favorite player. He wanted to see Jimmy Butler play. And Jimmy Butler tweaked his back in the warm-ups. Now, so this isn't your typical, apparently, doesn't appear to be, your typical. Chris, I was going to say, I'm glad management. you said apparently, because yeah, I, I don't know, but but Butler is a, a a trooper, you know. I wouldn't think Jimmy Butler was just low managing, but who knows? But anyway, the kid was just heartbroken, and they showed it all over ESPN, and it was a national televised game as well. And uh, Rob G, what all they do for? They brought the kid down because they saw him on TV as well and saw how heartbroken he was. And they uh, gave him a jersey, a, a Jimmy Butler jersey. I think did Butler take pictures with him at half court? Yeah, so he was given a jersey and a basketball signed by Butler at halftime. And then, Chris, we talked about this off the air before the show. You mentioned that. You had thought you heard Jamal Crawford say during the broadcast that Jimmy wasn't even in the arena. That actually may be true because according to uh, this this story here, Jimmy came back the next day to give them like a tour of the arena backstage or backstage in, in the bowels of the, the, the arena, took some right. pictures with them and things like that. So that was it. Yeah, because Jamal Crawford said on TNT that he had spoken to Jimmy like during the game, I guess, or right before it, and Jimmy was in pain, or I thought he said he was sick, but just not feeling good at his own house. So he wasn't even at the arena. So that's what they did for him. Uh, but Rob, I think this underscores a bigger point, and you you have a big, you know, statement to make about this. So tell us what your thoughts are. Like LeBron, Chris, I'm not impressed by the Miami Heat and Jimmy Butler. <laughs> I'm not. Because, you know what, they've been doing this to, to kids all over the country. the NBA. Yeah, in NBA America. In NBA America. This has gone on, and I feel bad for the kid and his family that came from Argentina. But don't cry for me, Argentina. I'm crying for all the kids in the United States who's had their birthday parties and Christmas presents ruined because players load manage. Where was Steph Curry and all those guys the other day? In, what was it, Cleveland? Chris, when they didn't play, six players didn't play. Rob, tonight, Denver and Milwaukee. I mean, these are the two right now, like, well, two of the best teams in the league, period. And two of the best players, Giannis versus Jokic. Oh, my gosh. Like, can't wait to see it. Jokic isn't and playing. Jokic, Jamal Murray, and Michael Porter Jr. are all sitting out. Chris, this is what I'm talking about. Now, Jokic had the hamstring injury. Um, but still, another you know guy's not playing. But it, it, and, the problem is low management is is all over the place, Rob. And, and here's my issue. I, I mean, that sounds nice. They they do it for the one kid, and that's fine. Plenty of other kids have been heartbroken over this. And the commissioner Adam Silver, they got to do something. They got to figure out a way to stop doing this to people. Stop. Uh, you know, uh, bait and switch, and uh, come see uh, Steph Curry and the Warriors, and there's no Steph Curry, and I pay four hundred dollars for tickets, and I ask for those tickets for my birthday, and I ask for, and I get it. There are real injuries, Chris, and I'm not talking about that. Real injuries are real injuries, and that's the luck of the draw. But when you go sometimes to a game, and then you don't know who's playing, or you know, putting up money. I've had friends tell me. Man, I bought Laker tickets. I want to go see whatever. And I get there, LeBron's not playing. Or I'm not. Like, right. everybody hasn't seen LeBron play. I know he's been around for 20 years, Chris. Everybody hasn't seen him play live. And for some people, they fly out to you L.A. One chance, right. They, right. That might be their one chance. Hey, we're going to do a weekend and the Lakers are playing. I'm going to go to the game or whatever. Because that was a couple of years ago here when uh, LeBron, I can't remember, was the they played the Clippers. 
uh, LeBron was coming here, I think, from Cleveland, right? And and they played the Clippers and the Lakers. And he didn't play in the he played in the Clippers game, but not the Lakers game. So a lot of the fans who you know were, were looking to see him play didn't get to see him, and they were disappointed. I just don't like it. And I they're trying to to appease and make amends for one kid. This happens all the time, and I and I don't think it's right. And I'm not that impressed by what they did for for that one family when other people have had to take it on the chin and just uh, you know laugh down the four hundred dollars they paid for right. tickets and then see it. I don't think it's fair. And Jokic did play last night, so I'm just saying that he's not hurt. It's not an injury. He he's they're sitting him out. But uh, Rob, I'm with you. I mean, look, Miami they did a nice thing, and I I I give them credit for that. But to your point, it's a larger problem than that. And I know that the teams all have their doctors. Obviously, the league had, does its studies. And what the science is telling them is that these guys need a break. Like, the, essentially, 82 games is too much. And I got two, two comments to that, Rob. Number one, I think virtually, not, not completely, but virtually all – high-performing jobs, high-performing career jobs, I bet you people are overworked. Like, my wife's a medical doctor, and she was on call last weekend. She very, if it, if it had called for it, she had actually had a quiet weekend, but there have been weekends where she might get two, three hours of sleep and be at the hospital all weekend, essentially. Now, I'm sure the science would say that's not how she's going to be at her optimum performance. All right? Rob, I know people, I'm sure you do too, who work on Wall Street, particularly the young people when they come out of college. And they're working 16 hours, 12-hour days. They're working 100 to 90 to 120 hours a week. Yep. Because it's like a weeding out process almost. Right, and the people and don't I've want it the most. I've had people tell me right. there are guys there that they using drugs just to stay awake and stay alert and you know do what they. But I'm sure the science says they're that's not good for them. They're overworking. But this is the they a lot of high performing jobs. A lot of lawyers work way more, maybe twice as much as forty hours a week. It, it is what it is. And so I think that, don't just tell me the science says it, because the science, if we had had it, would have said it when Michael Jordan was playing 82 games every year. Or when Carl Malone, who was an Iron Man, and Kevin Garnett, and Jason Kidd, and John Stockton were playing 80 games a year and still played 19, 20 years. So I, they seem to be fine physically. And, Michael and Jordan finally, played every Rob, game his last season. His last year as a 40-year-old. Finally, Rob, if you want to abide by that science and say the players cannot play 82 games, because it's not always the players, sometimes perhaps, but a lot of it's the teams and the trainers dictating when you are going to sit out, then cut the, the season to 65 games or whatever the number is that they can play. And then they'll and still have miss every 10 player games. plan on playing every single game. Because you're right, right? I do think if they cut the season to 70 games, that they still would have guys low, man. They still would. Because they're, they're so, back it's like a back. part of their mentality now. Yep. And they still would take off back to backs, and it would still be an issue. And, Chris, here's my thing if there was a, if there was a family that came or somebody who spent money, you know, to go see a particular player, and they could get that, like, if you were to give people a chance to get their money back. What do you think that would be like in the NBA? Like, right, you got 16,000 seats. And you go and you find out that Steph, uh, who else didn't play? Uh, Draymond, Clay. There were six players. You found out that those six players weren't, weren't playing. Now, you're in Cleveland. You came to see them. You got your home. How many people would, would ask, would go back and get a refund at the box office? I bet you a ton of people yep. would be like, I want my money back. If yep. I could get my money back. Because yep. that's not what I signed up for. And it would I, be I, chaos. It would be <laughs> chaos. If they found out, Chris, 
and then you could get your money back, people would stream I out of I don't advocate that. I, I just think, no, Rob, I'm just somehow, saying what would yeah, happen. somehow they have to figure this thing out. And I thought you had a good idea uh, last week when we talked. We addressed this a little bit. What was it you said? If you, said if you they, sit out a game, you have you to sit miss out three games. four games. Three or four. Right, right. You got to right. sit out that game and the next three. Right. And I think that would stop that, Chris. I because do. Because you could, teams couldn't afford to do that, right? No, you, you couldn't might afford miss the to playoffs have, or something. You, you're going to have Steph miss three games? Four, right. total of four. Like, that's a right. lot of games. Absolutely. And if you did it again, you miss another three plus or four, you know? So I, I actually think that's a good idea because if they, you know, players can always. That's what they do in know, baseball, I'll, Chris. I'll you go on the injured list. Or, but you go on the list, you know, like a 10-day disabled list. And you yeah. got to miss 10 days. If Even you if you're what, improved. Sit out? Even if you're improved. Like, if you say you're injured, you got to you gotta go on a disabled list. And then yeah, you get I, I actually think that, that, that might be something they should do. I don't even know, Rob, if even if you said, again, you can't prove it. I, I think what I, that's the best thing I can think of. Because even if you said, okay, if you low manage, you're not going to get paid for that game. Well, they would say, I really had the flu. Or I really had a, a right. back spasms. How are you going to prove I didn't? No, no, no. And see, that's what I'm saying. By, by doing it this way, by saying, okay, you're hurt. You got to miss three more games. That's where you would do where, uh, okay, I don't have to prove that you're, you know, like. Right, right. I don't have to prove I trust that you. you're I'm taking you at your word. I'm taking you're you at your at word, but games. you have to miss the next three games, which is fine. You'll get healthy, and then you could come back. Players yeah, wouldn't I, go I for like that. that. I like that, Rob. I like that. All right, uh, we're going to throw it out to you guys. 877-99 on Fox. 877-996-6369. Um, the low management. I mean, we we opened up with the kid in Miami, and that was that was heartwarming. But there's a bigger problem, and it's these players, and and the teams. I'm not gonna put it all on the players, but sitting players out too often, and ruining TV games, and obviously the chances that fans have to go and see some of their favorite players, maybe for the only time in their life. So, what are your thoughts about it? What do you think can be done? Rob had a good idea. If you miss one game, you have to miss at least the next three. So you'd miss four total. I like it. 